This 11-day journey starts just north of Lake Superior at the Santoy Lake Launch Point that can be accessed via Highway 17. From there, we would start the loop by paddling up Santoy Lake and tackle the infamous Diablo Portage. We would make our way from Diablo Lake through a series of creeks and rugged portages into Caringhorn Lake. After that, we would continue north through Esker Lake and into Steel Lake. Our crossover point was at the north end of Steel Lake, where we turned south into the Steel River, which consisted of a series of narrow passages in between smaller lakes. From there, we passed through Rainbow Falls and long stretches of meandering river that outlets back into the north end of Santoy Lake. Good evening. We just done about a 10 or 11 hour car ride up to Lake Superior Provincial Park. We're about three hours from where we're gonna camp tonight, but figured we'd uh, stop here and have a little bit of food. <laughs> All right. Oh. It's about 10.30. We've made it to Santoy Lake. We're about, I don't know, four or five kilometers down a little road here. Just uh, gonna camp here for the night. I set up a tent around here somewhere. Morning of the first day of the new trip here just at the launch point on Santoy Lake got everything loaded up and just down in that area is the parking area we camped out last night there's only one other car there right now all right let's give her well we're roughly Halfway across uh, up Santoy Lake. Some awesome uh, cliffs and hills here. So we're just coming up. We believe that this is the Diablo Portage. Looks a little steep. Probably should have done a few more squats before we a... uh, did this trip faded stop sign here we think this is it but this is going to be a bit of a climb oh yeah there's a sign portage sign oh yeah portage sign all right oh boy let's give her <laughs> this is stage 1 of the diablo portage consists of a couple hundred meters of basically straight up. Great so we're basically just dragging this thing up. We went with the uh, our river canoe which is more durable for later parts in the trip but not ideal for this kind of thing. It's about 75 pounds. But yeah, it's going basically Right up there. Just taking a break. All right, this is uh, stage three of the uh, Diablo gauntlet. It's basically uh, massive boulders strewn about with moss. with moss. And you can see there's some pretty uh, deep holes to fall into. Woo! Should have just gone to Disneyland for our uh, vacation, but I guess we decided to do this instead. Just a little bit of a squeeze. This and is like yeah, and it's pretty slick too. But we're almost at the end. Just 
in there, that's where that portage comes out, the deadly portage. Glad that's over. Feels like a decent one on. Uh, number three, Brookie. I'm gonna let him go though. Day one, dinner. It's cooking up a side. We're on the Diablo Island. Nice calm night. Morning of day two. Good sleep last night. <laughs> Just uh, set up a tarp here. Looks like it might rain later, but we're gonna stay here another night. Do some fishing. Morning of day three. It's about 6.30. Just gotta fire going here. Some hot water. It's supposed to rain today, so we think, and uh, it's kind of misting out right now, so got our rain gear on. Dawson doesn't have rain gear. Dawson does not have rain gear. So we're about, I don't know, 80% up the, the uh, Diablo Lake. We're in a narrows here and then if you go this direction it opens up into a big wide part. But we're going uh, down this direction for the portage into Cairnhorm Lake. And it's still pouring rain which is just perfect. Just at the north end of Diablo Lake at the Portage. Map says it's about 800 meters. There's a tree right over the uh, start of the trail, so that's a good sign. Just at the uh, other end of the Portage, it comes out of Diablo Lake. Portage was pretty well maintained, but Still seem long, <laughs> pretty rocky and slippery with the rain, but not too bad. Are you stuck? Oh no. Alright, we're trying to portage this. We're supposed to be able to paddle this, but we walk walking the gear over to the portage, which is over there. But Eric's gonna try to get through this with the canoe instead of carrying it. We'll see how that goes. The third portage today. Carried the gear from all the way over there. Made it to our site. Nice beach area. Mm 
<laughs> Morning of day four. Just leaving camp. We stayed on this uh, nice beach site on uh, Cairnhorn Lake. Weather seems to be holding up so far. So we're going to try and push on to uh, Steel Lake today. Just coming through upper part of Cairnhorn Lake. Pretty cool landscape with all the uh, exposed rock. The trees are really starting to turn yellow. Look at these crazy cliffs. Hillary said she was gonna free solo that. No problem. Dawson's got her sticks. Just at the north end of Cairnhorn Lake. Portage uh, entry is a bit of a challenge, especially in low water. It's pretty, uh, pretty thick with loon shit. So the portage ended, but uh, the creek is not super paddleable, if that's a word. So we've been just pulling our way along over these little uh, log jams. We were just commenting on how uh, the water levels seem pretty high in here, but now we've uh, come across this marvel of natural engineering. So now we have to somehow get down this dam or go around it. I think we should go over there. Just went down that. Slid down that dam. Now we're in uh, Esker Lake. Just at the entrance of the uh, portage out of Esker Lake. So we just came up through this marshy area. It's been dammed up by beavers. There's an old beaver lodge there all covered in grass. Just getting out the last, well hopefully the last portage before uh, Steel Lake. The exit was right there. That's what we were portaging around. So we were wrong, there was uh, two, more. two more beaver dams, so this is the first one. There's another one down there we gotta deal with. It's never easy. So this is the uh, south end of Steel Lake, we made it. Oh, I just set up camp here. This is night four. We got hit by a huge storm and a uh, storm hit us just over here. It was pretty hard paddling but uh, we got soaked, got over, set up the tarp. Sun came out. It might not stay out but we're gonna enjoy it. The beautiful spot here on uh, Steel Lake full beach site and then there's a spot uh, just in there for uh, a few tents and uh, campfire things like that a little pickerel dinner <sighs> nice and a beautiful sunset and this like beautiful beach site the 
just stop for a break. Come. Oh, oh you should go puppy. <laughs> In the canoe. There we go. <laughs> The links right there. It smells awesome. Yeah. Well, finished day five. We got to this campsite with a really nice view. And we're eating some pad thai and we did about how many kilometers of paddling 30 30 kilometers of paddling today so it took us most of the day yeah and then the highlight was we saw the lynx or bobcat not sure St stood and stared at us from a hill for a while it was pretty cool so we just came out of the Little portage by uh, the uh, exit of Steel Lake. It's about 260 meters, and uh, just as we we're bringing our stuff out to the creek here, right by the portage sign there, we stepped in a wasp's nest, and uh, unfortunately Dawson decided to stand right beside it and uh, got a couple of stings, but. She seems to be okay. And then we're heading down. There's three portages today, plus probably some lining down this creek. So here we go. Finished. 600 meter portage right there and then we come to this little cute waterfall and then we're gonna head down river just coming up on the crossover portage looks like it has regular maintenance looks like it's called Camp Chugabruski I'll thank uh, Dan and Greg for uh, some tips for this trip. They were here earlier this year. Pretty epic cliffs. Well, another rainstorm. Just seems to be raining every day. And it's still raining. Taking her down through these rapids. Water's too low. Just coming into our campsite here. I don't know what time it is, but it's getting dark. <laughs> and it's uh, still raining. Yeah, still raining and went through a pile of really shallow swifts where we had to pull over. And uh, one, one set of rapids we lined basically, and yeah, last few kilometers was kind of easy paddling, but fell in. yeah, the dog fell in or jumped in, we're not sure. But uh, he's having a sleep now. All right, here we are. It's on a beach across from a cliff. Should be a pretty nice spot. Just set up camp finally. Rain seems to have let up slightly. So we've uh, got some curry going here. Some We're just cooking over the fire because we uh, lost our little grill mm. somewhere on the portage. Somebody will snag that, but mm. that's some this is a dehydrated red lentil curry mm. I made. And, and then we have some 
Bareface Whiskey. Having a couple slugs, mm -hmm. and then uh, we're gonna make some, just making some tea here on the right. Yeah, long day. Mm. But but worth it. Worth it. <laughs> All right, it's day seven. It's one o'clock, but we took a rest day. Let's finally calm down on day seven. I'm just doing some fishing. Caught, caught a pike for the night. Dinner. Dinner. What do we got, Eric? Fish fry, pike. <laughs> pike to Ready to go. Day eight. Great campsite here. Overlooking these cliffs. Of course, it's the nice days when we're leaving it, but that's all right. Really strong northwest winds yesterday. Kind of sucked because it was a little rainy, but we are able to get stuff dried up. Dawson's been digging holes and we've been filling them back in. All right, let's go. making the most of it with a Dawson obstacle course. I'm waiting out the rain. Of this campsite, we're kind of in the middle of nowhere, not really any roads nearby, and uh, found a bunch of these cans from looks like the 80s. I guess people uh, didn't do no trace camping back then, they just hauled in two fours and downed them. On this week's edition of Thunderbox Central. We have a uh, unique model. It appears to be a uh, triangular shape constructed with a uh, sturdy frame with some plywood siding to keep some privacy and uh, a good rock base. It's quite a unique model. Today for dinner, we have a uh, appetizer of fried pickerel. And then uh, we're gonna do some uh, ramen as well with some dehydrated, uh, dehydrated beef and uh, vegetables. So we'll see how that turns out. Morning of day nine. Really pretty. Misty morning. It's going to be a big paddling day up to Rainbow Falls. Just upstream of Rainbow Falls. Pretty shallow area. They do lots of pullovers again this morning. But uh, we're just heading towards the takeout or the put-in. 
and uh, check out Rainbow Falls. Dead Horse Bridge. We're gonna push on. Coming up on the first uh, log jam here. Oh, there's a Mark Portage on the left. Just down at the downstream end of the second log jam portage. This one was uh, a bit of a doozy. I think it's about six to eight hundred meters long. And uh, we'll yeah, some really epic cliffs over on this side. Good morning. Last night we uh, ran out of juice with the GoPro, but uh, we paddled pretty close to dark, which is around 8.30 this time of year here. And we ended up just camping on this, uh, just on the top of this point bar here on the river. But, uh, this whole section of the river between um, Dead Horse Bridge and Santoy Lake is uh, it's pretty sandy, lots of point bars. Point bars are all covered in moose tracks and we actually uh, heard a uh, moose come out of the bush I think just on the other side of the river last night as we went to bed. Tried to find a relatively flat spot for the tent but it wasn't, wasn't the best. It wasn't the best sleep but and then we uh, just brought the canoe up here to shelter it a bit from the wind. We had a little fire last night until it started raining. But uh, yeah, not the best spot, but not the worst. <laughs> right? Here's our, uh, <laughs> <Look at that. laughs> here's our uh, water filtration system. Yeah. So sometimes you get camping spots where you need, uh, well, you need gravity for these filters, so built this one out of a paddle and some duct tape but uh yeah always filter your water folks <laughs> i can't stress that enough but yeah we always we use the uh i think it's a platypus gr gravity works filter four liters seems to work pretty well for two people we filled it up twice last night and uh yeah the canoe took a bit of a hit too this was a couple of days ago, but lost some of the skid plate on the back here, lifting over some of those rocks and uh, lost some of my fresh paint. But yeah, the canoe took a bit of a beating, but uh, that'll be a fall project for me to fix that up. All right, we're gonna head down uh, towards Santoy Lake now. So we've been paddling what seems like hours past that 
that uh, campsite we were at last night that we made and uh, we're making our way down towards Santoy Lake. So we're at the last portage, last log jam. It's about I think 300 meters long. We found what we think is the portage. Portage sign. Oh yeah, portage sign. But it's uh, as you can see a bit of a bit of a climb to get up there with the boat and all the gear. So. Log jam. Massive cedars. We made it. Last portage of the trip. Woo! Woo! <laughs> All right, we're leaving Steel River. Very, very pretty lake. Wow. We finally have some tailwinds. We made it. Some evening. Just going out for a fish. Hillary's keeping the dog entertained. This was our uh, drying rack for the day. Came in pretty handy. The campsites are uh, just up in there. There's a couple of different spots you can put tents up. Probably more down there too. But the water is obviously quite low, so. Bit of a hike out to the beach, but not too bad. All right, just checking out the uh, Thunderbox situation. Have not been back here yet. What the hell is this? It's like a precarious setup. Oh, somebody must have tumbled in there. Austin, get out of there. Wah. And away we go. Back to the uh, boat launch at Santoy Lake. So we're heading down this way. It's about 10 kilometers, so winds aren't too bad yet, but I'm sure they'll pick up as we go. Dawson's ready to go. Got her sticks. There's the portage sign. Eric, want to do it again? Uh, <laughs> in 10 years. 10 years. Coming in. This is the end of the trip. Yay. 11 days. At Santoy to Santoy. <laughs> Pretty awesome trip. But, all right. So we uh, rolled into the boat launch here at Santoy. We had a nice little surprise waiting for us. So we got the donut on and uh, got to make it out of this little gravel road for five kilometers and then we're gonna figure out where to get we where we can get a tire fixed 